there's a lot of different variations and different ways to rig this. Burn patterns have been working really well. This week's Fuzz Bite Report, just keep snapping it off the bottom. This is just a remarkable concentration of fish. Real good fish. Oh, she looks so nice. Wow. Unreal. Look at that. They are heavy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> On today's show, we're talking about selective harvest. This is Angling Buzz TV. I'm Troy Linder. And I'm Mike Hayner. It's a little bit different subject from other shows this season, but a very, very important one, and that's selective harvest. With the advancements in technology, uh, the rise of social media, we're catching more fish than ever. Good news for anglers, mm -hmm. maybe not so good news for fish populations. Yeah, that's a good point, Troy. You know, a couple days ago here in Minnesota, we had our fishing opener, and I guarantee you a few fish got caught and harvested and eaten. So, which is all well and good. I mean, the fishing is all about keeping fish and eating them, but it's also about letting them go. So it's just a matter of which ones you want to keep and which ones you should throw back to keep a fish population in a lake healthy. Yeah, that's, that's very true. You don't always have to bring home a limit. And right now, let's take a closer look at selective harvest and how it applies to fishing today. A question many people are asking today is, where does my food come from? Organic farms, urban and rooftop gardening, foraging and eating local are all growing greatly in appeal with today's consumer. And we are reconnecting with our food. And guess what? There's a great source near you. It's fish. They are healthy and tasty and offer a fantastic pastime, allowing you to enjoy time with friends and family or give you an opportunity just to reconnect with nature. Sustainability is key with all of our natural resources, including fish. And selective harvest is the concept of keeping the more abundant smaller fish and leaving the larger ones in the system. This works for many reasons. Smaller fish are easily replaced and have fewer contaminants than larger fish. Big fish are good at making more fish. And if good numbers of these larger fish are present, they help sustain and protect the system size structure. Understanding which are the best fish to keep isn't always so simple. For example, a 9-inch sunfish may be 8 to 10 years old, where a 16-inch walleye may only be 4 years old. The idea with selective harvest is to maximize production, harvesting the most fillets produced in the shortest amount of time. Maintaining healthy fisheries is the key, especially for future generations to be able to not only catch and release fish, but catch and keep fish. You know, across the upper Midwest, panfish make up a big base of forage, not only for the predators, but us anglers to keep. They sure taste good. But many fisheries, trout and salmon, are put and take. They're actually meant to be kept. Yeah, good point, Troy. You know, I just got back from Lake Michigan a couple weeks ago doing one of my favorite things, which is spring brown trout fishing. And those fish are put in the lake just to be caught and kept. They're not native to that system. So I, I have no trouble going out there catching a few brown trout, killing them, eating them. But when it comes to panfish, that's a whole other story. So panfish lakes, we find them across the Midwest, but they get fished really hard for eating purposes. So you have to really watch the amount of fish you keep out of those lakes. And with the angling pressure, like we talked about, they can get fished down hard. So the key to a good panfish lake is balance. You want a good size structure in the lake from small to large. When anglers get really carried away catching fish in the lake on a really good bite, they'll crop off all the fish on the top end, the big fish. And you got to realize it takes a long time for a bluegill to get to that, be that size. And they actually don't get to spawning maturity until they're five years old. So by removing the big fish, you cause the smaller fish to begin reproducing earlier, which stunts their growth, which is when you get a stunted fish population. So. Yeah, panfish, panfish are su such an important fish for healthy fisheries. And right now, we have a short break. Stay with us. When we come back, we have the first of our Buzz Bite reports, as well as our highlight destination feature as Angling Buzz continues. At Donalinger Auto, the customer comes first. That's why they've been in the automotive business for over 50 years. They pride themselves in making real connections with real people. They're auto experts and active community supporters. Buying, leasing, new, or pre-owned, Donalinger's top-notch service stands above. 
They'll keep you on the road and on the water. Stop in for a visit to see the excellent variety or shop at home at donalingerauto.com. Sportfish Michigan is your number one source for top charter captains and fishing guides in Michigan. Our network of professionals are full-time anglers with years of experience providing customers with the best possible fishing trip services. Fish for trout, salmon, steelhead on Lake Michigan or its famous tributary rivers, the Traverse City area's world-class smallmouth bass, walleye fishing on the Detroit River and Saginaw Bay or Northern Michigan spectacular ice fishing. We do it all. Sportfish Michigan. Get out. Get bit. From casting for fish to cruising the lake, Fleet Farm has what you need for a day out on the water. Whether it's keep her running like new season, not sharing this spot with anyone season, or even best day ever season. There's a reason people say, if Fleet Farm doesn't have it, you don't need it. Because we have it all. Fleet Farm, built for real life. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Coming up, we have our I Like Destination feature. We're heading up to Lake Vermilion. Yeah, Lake Vermilion is an awesome lake in northern Minnesota. I've been going there for probably 20, 25 years, and multi-species lake. It's got trophy walleyes, trophy muskies, big pike, panfish. It's even got whitefish. It's just a good multi-species lake to fish. Yeah, anywhere where you have both size and numbers, uh, you definitely want to visit there. I'm heading up there in August. I'm really looking forward to it. Right now, let's take a closer look at Lake Vermilion. You know, over the course of the season, I get a chance to fish all over North America, but to tell you the truth, I'm probably on one of my favorite lakes in North America, Lake Vermilion in uh, northern Minnesota. I'm fishing with a longtime friend and guide who has actually guided on Lake Vermilion for over 20 years. And we're gonna look at sort of a unique perspective on Lake Vermilion. Billy Rosner has spent a lot of time on this water and I can see why. It, oh, it is, it's uh, such a diverse lake. It reminds me of a mini lake of the woods and it's such a multi-species mega up here. I mean, it, you have, uh, you know, the trophy muskies, I mean, it's crazy. The big Leech Lake strain, every time you're throwing up here, you got a crack at a big 50. Uh, the walleye fishing, you know, it's, it's probably getting to be one of the top walleye fisheries in the state. Uh, you know, if you want eating size fish, they're here. You want up to the big trophy size, the high 20s. Uh, big largemouth, big smallies, big pike, and the crappies too. Is, uh, there's some really beautiful crappies in this lake. Billy, if you had to uh, point out, you know, what would be the, the real key things that is responsible for the quality of the fishery that we have on Lake Vermilion? There are several groups that really work together hand in hand in keeping this fishery really healthy. The Minnesota DNR Fisheries out of Tower, they do an outstanding job. You got the Lake Vermilion Resort Association, the Lake Vermilion Lake Association. You have the Boys Fort Band of Chippewa and the guides, they all kind of work together as a team to make this just an outstanding fishery. It's really, really cool. It's interesting you say that because so many people think that, well, these lakes just function by themselves, but, you know, smarter management philosophy, stocking program, slot limits, everything that goes into it is really key to maintain these fisheries. And this is a really unique one. The walleye fishery up here, I mean, it's just awesome right now. I've been guiding up here a lot of years. Right now, it's as good as if I've seen it in the past 20 years. The way they're managing this, I mean, the slot now is 20 inches and under, you can keep them. I mean, for a lot of years, they had no slot, then they went to the 17 inch, then they crept it up to 18, and now we're at 20 and under, you can keep them, which is just awesome. I mean, that just spells out it's a healthy, healthy fishery. Actually, there's a lot of really nice trophy size fish in here too. I know what you, Al was up here, what, a couple of years ago? Oh, and man. he just smoked, you guys smoked the great big ones. Oh, when Al and I got nice, into that, nice you know, that jig and wrap biting those high 26s, 28s, I mean, it was just numbers of them. It's, uh, there's a lot of those big, those big fish in here, Jimmy. 
You know, this lake is really sort of an interesting body of water because of the way it's made up. It's got deep water basins, it's got shallow water basins, it's got big shallow water flats. It's got all the qualities or the attributes to grow fish. Not only lots of fish, but big fish because it's got the deep water for it, the shallow water, the perch, the shiners, the tulipies, the whitefish. It's got everything. That's why, why it's so good for so many very deep fish species. You know, it is important to know your regulations. We have regulations, obviously, state by state, but also lake by lake. Yeah, you're right, Troy. Lake Vermilion is a great fishing lake, and it's one of our large lakes in Minnesota. And they're, most of our large lakes are managed by multiple entities, and they keep track of them on a year-to-year -year basis to keep them healthy. And the regs are put in place there to keep it a good fishing lake, but a healthy fishing lake. So before you go out to your favorite lake, especially our big lakes, make sure you know your rules and regulations. Yes, a lot of research and science goes in to these regulations and rules, so it's important to know them. And right now, it's time for the first of our BuzzBite reports. For our first report, let's head over to Michigan where Captain Ben Wolf has been taking advantage of this cool spring. We've got some really unseasonably cool weather for the month of May. You know, even though it's mid-May here, it's still chilly, which actually is really nice for prolonging the pre-spawn bass bite for both smallmouth and largemouth bass all across the state. We also have some really interesting walleye opportunities. You know, walleyes are still shallow. They're kind of relating into that 12 to 15 foot zone. And during the day, they're kind of, you know, scooting out to that 20 foot zone, but they're still available for those that want to cast as well as troll on the inland lakes. We also have some really nice Cisco action really heating up on the Grand Traverse Bay area. You know, those, those fish were a little bit delayed in coming in, but now they're in there, they're shallow in that 20 to 30 foot zone and biting aggressively. Next up, let's talk to Troy Peterson on Lake Winnebago. Well, the water's clear, the water's cold, uh, but you gotta slow things down using some live bait and uh, plenty of fish to be caught. Um, up on the river, we're getting a lot of white bass pulling flies, and uh, you know, just kind of everything's getting cold. The water temperature's finally starting to warm up. Uh, we've got some crappies going on in the channels. Uh, we're looking for that warmer water. Any place you can find warm water right now, you're going to catch fish, whether it be the white bass or the walleyes, uh, crappies, bluegills, some perch going on yet. Uh, but uh, plenty of fishing opportunities here on the Winnebago system. Catch you guys on the water. Thanks, Troy. Now don't go anywhere because when we come back we have more buzz bite reports to come as Angling Buzz continues. engine runs smoother and lasts longer with Seafoam Marine Pro. Get it today at Fleet Farm. And while you're there, enter for a chance to win this boat in the Seafoam Marine Pro sweepstakes. Seafoam Marine Pro, available at Fleet Farm. Explore Alexandria, Minnesota. Whether it's a long weekend or a week long loaded with family fun, you'll find plenty of things to do in Alex. Unleash your inner explorer with over 300 lakes, beaches, parks, hundreds of miles of trails, dining, golf, shopping, museums, and history. Alexandria is Minnesota's hidden gem. Go to explorealex.com to find your vacation this season. Having spent a lifetime fishing all over North America, I know a lot about water, wind, and waves. Water can be an inviting place, and yet at the same time, it can also be very unforgiving. With a simple push of a button, this fully adjustable smooth moves air suspension is designed to tame the waves and give you a smooth and comfortable ride no matter what conditions you face. Tame the water, wind, and waves with smooth moves. Okay, let's do it. Wow, 
That's a big boy there. It's unbelievable. Look at the size of that beast. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. For our next report, we're going to head over to north central Wisconsin where Justin geike has been on a multi-species bite. The fish of the day is definitely walleyes right now. While the Wisconsin River game fish season is open year round, the walleye spawn has come to a conclusion. We're now in post spawn, which means those walleyes have moved off of the shallow gravel to adjacent break lines and can be caught with things like rip and wrap and jig and plastic combinations as they look to recover from the spawning period. If you want to take advantage of the opener for the northern lakes, Really good right now. Every lake's going to be in the pre-spawn, but we're going to have several weeks of this opportunity while all these varying lakes, sizes, and water clarities are going to change and water temperatures drastically. So watch that water temperature. Take advantage. Look for the shallow gravel and low light periods. Jig and minnow, jig and plastic, crankbaits, rip and wrap, all great options for those spawning walleyes. Hey, don't forget the crappies too. They're schooled up in deep water. It can be found with slip bobbers and live bait combinations or jigs and plastics. Now let's jump in the boat with Jared Houston, who's been on a little bit of everything in the Duluth Superior area. Hey, hopefully everybody is enjoying their opener to the season. I know we sure are. We're on the St. Louis River currently targeting down trees, using side scan to our advantage, looking for crappies, and using live bait. Whether it's a float over a worm, or a float over a minnow, or just a jig and a minnow, everything seems to kind of be working here and there, hit and miss, that sort of thing the typical fishing, right? Uh, on Lake Superior, guys are long lining for salmon still from the North Shore all the way to Shawamigan Bay and catching a few browns with kickers and they're only using stick baits behind planer boards. You don't have to have big fancy boats and down to get out there and catch fish this time of year. Smelt season winding down, but on the stream side of things, anglers are still catching some good steelhead in the rivers, uh, float indicators over spawn sacks and kind of spreading themselves out on corners and deep holes and doing really well. On the shallow bays of inland lakes from the reservoirs north of Duluth, the pike chain, the Chippewa flowage, and so on, panfish, shallow waters. They're kind of doing their pre stage thing. Worm chunks under floats have been really good, or just little beetle spins or whatnot for fish location. Uh, walleyes, the big ones, have kind of retreated back to the deep water, and the males are still kind of hanging out by the decaying vegetation and the river mouths and that sort of thing. So don't be afraid to target those areas as well. Take care, tight lines. For the last three reports of the show, we're going to focus on Minnesota, where the walleye opener just happened on the Inland Lakes. Now let's start in Lake Vermilion with Billy Rosner. Catching the walleyes a bunch of different ways up here right now. Really, there's not a right or wrong way. I like using the moon eye jigs, tip it with a rainbow or a sucker middle, then fishing these up shallow and fishing them deep also. Same thing with the rigs. This time of the year, I like using like a 42 to 48 inch leader, a wide gap number four VMC hook. Also, you can throw plastics. I like the 360s, those work great. And don't forget about the deep bite on Vermilion, that 25 to 35 foot, your troughs and your pinch areas, and those steep breaks. There's a lot of fish that are holding those areas, those small eating size age classes. So don't forget about that. You got the crappies going in the afternoon, and also the northern pike back in your shallow bays. So have a great week and be safe out there. Now let's head over to Leech Lake where Jeff Anderson is talking alternatives to live bait. I'll kind of run through my setup here. This is a Clam TG. What I like about this jig on a plastic is it has a little bit longer shank, but the jig head is a little bit smaller. This is a quarter ounce because of its tungsten. And the tungsten actually acts really good in the water where it falls ultra fast. So it brings that plastic down. And when you fish a plastic, it, it's important that you're not fishing it like a, like a regular live bait because live bait will tend to fall off if you fish it as aggressive. So you wanna upsize your jig um, from an eighth ounce to a quarter ounce. And you wanna upsize your jig stroke. And, and what I mean by that is you wanna move that jig a lot faster to create a uh, reaction bite. So make sure if you're headed out, you're having a hard time finding spot tail shiners to give this Fartsonker McRubber and the Drop TG a try. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. You know, talking with Jeff, he's been catching walleyes on leech as shallow as four feet of water. Now speaking of shallow, let's head over to the Alexandria region where Joe Segura is also on a shallow water bite. I've just been telling everybody this time of year um, to fish shallow. Um, whether that's after dark, you can get extremely shallow, three to five foot of water, cast from shore, um, uh, any type of minnow style crankbait. Um, I like to use uh, this jointed style. You can turn it very slow 
and get some of those big uh, big fish to bite after dark. Also, the X-Wrap does a very nice job as well as the Husky Jerk. All three of those baits are pretty key for me um, this time of year. During the day then, I like to look for that 10 to 15 foot of water uh, with a jig and a minnow, and, uh, or otherwise a lindy rig and a minnow. But it's minnows predominantly until the water starts to warm up here. So just move real slow through those areas, whether it's with a jig or a lindy rig, and uh, kind of mark those fish in that uh, 10 to 15 foot area and, and uh, back and forth through there real slow and you should be able to get some good action. Thanks, Joe. Now don't go anywhere because when we come back, we have cool products and the technique of the week as angling buzz continues. According to Minnesota's Department of Natural Resources, in 2017, 97% of boaters surveyed by watercraft inspectors followed Minnesota's clean drain dispose laws. Let's keep it this way. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from watercraft, including the motor, and keep drain plugs out during transport. Dispose of unused bait properly. Together, we're preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species in Minnesota. Help your marine engine run smoother and last longer with Marine Pro from the makers of Seafoam Motor Treatment. Just pour it in. Fast starts and smooth running power have never been this easy. Seafoam Marine Pro, available at Fleet Farm. Lake Vermilion. Explore. Relax. Reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Whoa. Get hooked on our trophy wall. That's a beauty. Bass. My favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do? You'll never get bored. Rooms with a view? We got them. Lake Vermilion. Four seasons of fun. And now it's time for our cool products brought to you by Fleet Farm. Today we're talking about selective harvest and across the angling buzz region, the size of the fish you can keep varies a lot. So it's important to have a good ruler. From Rapala, this is a 60 inch retractable ruler. Very easy to see. It's also nice and compact. It has a little lip on the bottom that you put the fish's nose up to and then uh, you can measure it just fine up to 60 inches. This is from Rapala. And for filleting your catch from Bubba Blade, this is the Bubba Blade electric fillet knife. You can see it comes with four different size blades uh, and different stiffness depending on if you have a big catch like salmon and more flexible blades if you're filleting like say a lot of panfish. It has an eight foot cord, a non-slip grip handle from Bubba Blade, their electric fillet knife. And a great reel here from Daiwa, this is the Daiwa Revros. LT. This happens to be the 2000 model, which is perfect for about any spinning rod. Six and a half foot to seven foot medium. You pair this on there, you can catch just about anything. And this is the LT series, which means light and tough. This weighs just over seven ounces. I use these. It's an awesome, awesome reel. Blackfish makes a lot of different products for the outdoorsman. They make uh, rain suits, soft shells, and right here, this is their Cool Core Guide Hoodie. I've used these a lot. They're very, very comfortable. If it's really hot outside, this will help protect you from the sun. And if it's a little bit colder outside too, you can layer with this as well. The Cool Core Guide Hoodie from Blackfish. Now over here, some spoons from Northland Tackle. Spoons are an old school technique. Hey, they work really well. You can cast them, you can troll them. This is the Forge Minnow Casting Spoon from Northland Tackle. These really work well, you know, for pike, trout, and salmon. And again, casting or trolling these works really, really good. They get a nice high quality treble hook on the bottom. From Northland Tackle, the Forge Minnow. With swim baits, it can be kind of a confusing topic. Storm makes it easy. 
with the Storm 360 search bait. You can see there's two different models right here. Each package comes with two extra bodies. You basically just cast this out and reel it. I've used these a lot with great success. This is the regular model, and they also have the new swimmer model. As you see, it has a little lip on there, which adds a little bit extra action as well. If you're fishing around wood or timber, it's nice. It's almost like a little bit of a crankbait side-to-side -side action on this and, and deflects uh, the wood to trigger fish to bite. The 360 GT Searchbait Series from Storm. All these products, they're available online at fleetfarm.com. You can also get them in your local Fleet Farm store. And right now, it is time for our technique of the week, bluegill sliders. Bluegills are fantastic table fare, and we always stress the fact that you want to keep the ones that are 9 inches or less. Now the fact is, you need to have a quality knife to maximize your yield off of the smaller fish. That is where a 6 inch Bubba Blade Whiffy Knife comes in very handy. This allows you to get around the smaller fish with ease, and you always want to get the most bang for your buck. Now that you have your panfish fillets, I want to share with you a bluegill slider recipe my brother Bill came up with. One, get panfish fillets. Check. Two, get some of your favorite salad greens. Check. Three, get some mini sandwich buns. Check. Four, make tartar sauce. This is a mixture to your taste. One part mayo, one part sour cream, pickle relish, minced garlic and shallots, and some lemon zest check. Five, now for the breading. One part flour, one part breadcrumbs, one part panko, some paprika, salt, pepper, onion, and garlic powder to taste. Check. Six, pan fry the breaded fillets in a light amount of high heat cooking oil for a few minutes on each side. Stack everything on the bun and away you go. It's so easy and so good. Yeah, bluegills are tasty, but they're also a delicate resource. And again, that's why selective harvest is so important. Yeah, I agree 100%. Now make sure to check in next week because we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, big water smallmouth. Yeah, smallmouth are my favorite fish. Hey, we want to remind you, as always, to help stop the spread of aquatic invasive species. Anytime you're leaving any body of water, remember, clean, drain, and dry. And make sure to head over to your local fleet farm because our friends from Seafoam are giving away a rigged Lund boat. We also have a sweepstakes going on here through Angling Buzz. You can win an awesome weekend up on Lake Vermilion, $500 fleet farm gift card, $500 worth of Rapo tackle, and two days of guided fishing. Hey, thank you very much for joining us this week. I'm Troy Linder. And I'm Nick Linder. We will see you next time. This week's Buzz Bite Report. Tony Roach. Right, Rollstone. Lee Telkin here. Brad Durick up here on the Red River. The Muskegon River. Leech Lake. Devil's Lake. Beautiful Lake Vermillion. Malek. Top water's been really, really fun. Go to the plastics. Bass like this. Fresh report from Lake of the Woods. Grand Traverse Bay. Alexandria, Minnesota. Get out, get fishing. Have fun. Rock and roll. Take care.